Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. It's that time of the month, no pun intended, um, favorite perfumes for the month of April. So let's get straight to it. First one, I mean, this one was expected. It's been like this since months now, but it's almost empty. It's Gardenia and um, I wake up to it. The earlier in the morning I have to wake up for work or whatever reason, the more I kind of go to this one. If I were to... I don't know, just like start the day, socially speaking, later during the day, I might not go for this one. This is really the morning type of, of fragrance. If I begin with it in the morning, it goes with me throughout the entire day. This is the Eau de Parfum, the only Les Exclusives Eau de Parfum that I'm actually using. All the others are Eau de Toilette. Um, so you can see we're almost, it's almost done. It's finished. Gardenia is almost empty. And I got to get a new one. Oh, the addiction is so strong. The floral aspects of it, the abstract floral aspect of it is amazing. And then there's this kind of artificial kind of tone, green touch in there. It's it, it's a grassy tone, but it's just the right amount of kind of artificial, synthetic, chemical, and natural. It just keeps me guessing, and I'm loving it. Um, the, the kind of abstraction of what a gardenia should smell like is pretty spot on here. Um... It's, it's an abstraction. We know we can't synthesize gardenias, but it nails it. It's just, it's very, very dreamy. Love it. So there you go. Moving on. Um, April and April showers. Sometimes April can be a freak month in terms of sun, shower, cloud, no clouds, you know, blue skies, chilly, even snow sometimes. I mean, it's, it's all a big mess. But there's a certain type of mm, need that I have of warmth to to get to me in in April, and I usually get that from uh, incense Avignon from uh, Comme des Garçons, the Comme des Garçons incense series. This one is a bit harder to see because it's all kind of black, lucidity, and then it just kind of twirls. But there's five of them. The Avignon is the one I like, as well as Jasalmer. But for April, I chose Avignon and. It's really very incense -y, but with with air in it. You can check out the review of this one in the description box down below. I reviewed it many, many, many moons ago. It's really, really good. It gives me peace and calm um, and serenity, you know, despite the fact that in April you could have throughout one single day from showers to sun to clouds, everything. You know, this one still grounds you and makes you focus. That's why I really like this one. Also, morning or or early afternoon, or afternoon, and then throughout the day. Then, one of my favorite fragrances of all time, unfortunately, in this formulation, discontinued. Um, so I still keep hunting down the vintage ones. It's Dolce Gabbana, the first version for men. Uh, I mean, nothing compares to it, really. It's the one with the sticker, not with the printed name. And it's made in Italy by um, Euro Italia, I think, is the... Yeah, Euro Italia produced them. Now Shiseido took over. The new batches, people have been asking me, Jacob, have you tried the new batches that are made in France, produced by Shiseido? Are they any good in comparison to the Italian ones? No, they're not. They're still bad, I have to say. Um, they might be maybe a bit better than the made in UK and made in Germany versions, which were, all, which were tremendous, horrible. But the made in France version is not good. I would never purchase it. The Made in Italy one, however, is a dream. It's it's so dreamy. This is this is the one and only Dolce Gabbana. Like there's nothing like it. And this is the Purom version, Eau de Toilette. Um, you know, fragrances are unisex to me, so I just state that it's Purom because they did in the 90s release two versions. There's a red rectangular bottle that says Dolce Gabbana, and then there's this kind of rounded, with the blue stopper version that also says Dolce Gabbana. The only difference is that the red one was marketed towards women and this one was marketed towards men. The lavender, the, the powdery touch, the, there's a little bit of pepper there. Oh my God. It, it's just, it's Sicily in a bottle, seriously, and summer and you feel the waves of, of the sea and oh, the Mediterranean is there and the crickets are there and the sun is there and... I don't know, I even envision cherry tomatoes drying in the sun. But anyway, loving it. So this one kind of makes me dream of summer to come. We're going back to Chanel. Number four 
is very elegant. I haven't been using it. Um, I haven't used it in a while. Now it's back on rotation. I use it almost every day now in this period. Um, it is Pour Monsieur Chanel, the Eau de Parfum version. More than the Eau de Toilette. Um, that's because this one has an edginess to it that I need in April. The Eau de Toilette to me is more summery, I guess, but right now the Eau de Parfum really nails it. This is more after 6 p.m. or maybe for a business meeting, it's also very good. It gives you a lot of uh, self-confidence and it's fascinating how they managed to create an Eau de Parfum that it's clean but it kind of gives, in, in the way it smells, at least on my skin, it gives out hints of a potential dirtiness to it. Like there's a sexuality in there that is quite rare with Chanel fragrances, but this one has it because it's kind of proper, almost dapper, if you will. But then there's it, it kind of emanates hints of what could happen behind closed doors. So this one is really good, in particular in this time of year when it can get quite humid uh, outside this one it gives an illusion of dryness nevertheless so kudos kudos to the Pour Monsieur Eau de Parfum mm. so we're hitting evening right this one is already towards the evening but now as night falls we go Dior we need a bit of vanilla but we also need a bit of strange, androgynous flickering of ingredients and scents. And here we go to Fahrenheit, the pure perfume, the Parfum of Fahrenheit Dior, created by Demachy. Oh my gosh. This one is green in the way I want a warm fragrance to be green in April. It's not generally speaking, you, I don't know, it's not really a green fragrance. Fahrenheit, I mean, it, it kind of, the title already evokes heat and, and, and a sort of heaty type of pressure, if that even exists. But this one, it's wet in the opening and then it goes dry and warm and heated in the dry down. The dry down is this hot vanilla and the opening is wet and moist so it, it's amazing and um i usually like tend to use this one winter time like before christmas like november december but right now i'm kind of rediscovering its qualities in spring and actually let's spray it on because i'm i'm really feeling it The pure perfume of Fahrenheit. It's very misunderstood. Fahrenheit in general. Um, usually people don't give it a chance. They they just spray it and right out of the bottle. It can be really, I mean, I don't know. It has aldehydes in there as well. It has some chemical opening. Like you got to give it time. You need to let that wetness and that almost petrol, petroleum or, or gasoline type of note in there. You got to let that evaporate. But that's very sexual too, actually. And then what which stays behind is this animalic type of vanilla. And Demachy is a master with his vanillas. We know that Dior is famous for all of their vanillas. This one has a really beautiful vanilla in the dry down. I mean, the pure perfume of Fahrenheit is amazing. Extremely unisex. This one, although you have to really bear in mind, it has to work with your chemistry. Not with your gender, but with your chemistry. With, with, with the type of oil, you know the type of essential oils that your own skin produces, because this one can blend in perfectly, but it can go really sour as well. So this is one of those you, you could not, and you should never buy blind. Always try it on prior to, but you could check out the review of this one in the description box down below. Actually, I've reviewed all of these uh, fragrances, all five that you've seen for the month of April. So you could check those out. The links are in the description box down below. I will also at the end of this video post another three links. So there you have it guys. Um, those are my top five. I hope you've enjoyed it. I, and also, I hope you're going to let me know in the description box down below. Not description box. Damn it, Jacob. Comments, comments, comments. 
in the comment section down below what are your favorite uh, perfumes for the month of April or in general because some people don't like to rotate fragrances either um, I do sometimes I begin with one and I end with a totally different one and I, I begin with one in the morning and then by the time it's evening I'm wearing a totally different one that's just how I roll so thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube I'm also on Instagram Facebook and Twitter no matter what happens we keep fighting we keep wearing perfume because life is just that much more precious and beautiful if there's a fragrance in your life it just makes every moment more precise and more worth living in my personal opinion so I guess all I want to say is never give up on love guys love y'all see you soon take care bye Mwah.